I can still remember the first time I saw Vulcan and Aeolus. It was many years ago, and I was totally fascinated, but didn't know what to make of it. It was such a strange, complex work. If you'd lived in Italy in the late 1400s, you'd have known that Vulcan and Aeolus were two gods from Roman mythology. This was the time of the Renaissance. That's a French word that means rebirth. And it was a great rebirth of interest in the past, especially for ancient Greek and Roman myths. But this is much more than just a painting about classical mythology. The artist, his name was Piero di Cosimo, and he lived in Florence, Italy, was using mythology to create a vision of the very dawn of human civilization and how human cleverness and industry were about to change the way people lived and interacted with their environment. The foreground is dominated by five male nudes and a young woman wrapped in a red cloak. Vulcan and Aeolus are the two figures on the left. Vulcan, god of fire, is working at his handvil, making a horseshoe. Aeolus, master of the winds, is the one on the far left pumping the bellows. That's those swollen bags with wooden handles. He's fanning the flames of the small fire to keep it hot enough for Vulcan's metalwork. Behind Vulcan, there's a man sleeping on the ground, while another seems to be in deep conversation with the young mother. The man sitting on a white horse looks down curiously at Vulcan's work. If this is a depiction of early civilization, you might take his expression to mean that he's never seen a horseshoe before. His horses may be newly domesticated and have no horseshoes. Behind this foreground grouping, in the middle distance on the right, you can see some men hard at work building a wooden structure. The whole scene is set in a deep landscape, delightfully alive with birds, animals, and even insects. Piero di Cosimo was a bit of a recluse and was said to like animals better than humans. One of his contemporaries wrote that he was more like a beast than a man. Oh, and there's even a giraffe. Why? Well, it was probably included to show that exploration and novelty were valued during the Renaissance. But it may also be a reference to a famous giraffe that had been given to the Grand Duke of Florence by the Sultan of Egypt just a few years before Di Cosimo made this painting. Another important aspect of Renaissance art was an interest for technical innovation. All across Europe, artists like Di Cosimo were exploring the possibilities of oil painting, experimenting with new styles, and rediscovering techniques which had been lost for hundreds of years. That's important to remember when we look at this work. For instance, to our modern eyes, the artist appears to be having problems depicting the human form. Notice how the heads of the two gods seem too small for their bodies. Or how the sleeping man doesn't seem to have a waist. Di Cosimo, like many artists of the early Renaissance, was still mastering the art of making people and nature look real. One of the techniques he had learned for this purpose was brand new at the time. It's called chiaroscuro, an Italian word that means light and dark. For example, look at Vulcan's extended leg. Do you see how it looks three-dimensional, almost sculptural? How the top part emerges from the shadow on the underside of the leg? Di Cosimo also uses linear perspective to create the illusion of depth in his landscape. Notice how objects get smaller further back in the landscape and how the colors become lighter too. I also love the way he leads your eye into the distance by repeating certain shapes. For instance, notice how the builder in the middle distance is holding his hammer in almost the same way as Vulcan and how the structure he's working on is similar to the one Aeolus is sitting under. Now look at the young mother. 
Can you see another woman wrapped in a similar red cloak? She's in the middle distance in the left of the painting, also holding an infant in her arms. If you look closely, there is another white horse with a rider coming down the hill behind her house. Finally, if you look past the giraffe, you'll see the distant mountains have been painted a pale blue. This is an artistic technique known as atmospheric perspective, which is another way to add the illusion of depth to a two-dimensional work. This wasn't a new technique. It had been used by the ancient Greeks, but was lost during the Middle Ages. The technique was rediscovered in the 15th century, and it became a standard element in European art. So, there is much more to Vulcan and Aeolus than you might see at first glance. Here is an accomplished artist of the early Renaissance showing his mastery of available artistic techniques as he depicts the beginning of civilization. Oh, another thing, take a closer look at Vulcan working at the anvil. Researchers think that Di Cosimo used the rich and balding wool merchant from Florence as the model for Vulcan. His name was Francesco del Pugliese. He was an art lover and a man who paid for this painting to decorate his country villa. Over 500 years later, we're still talking about his painting. Now, that's an investment. <laughs> <laughs>